Hey guys, it's Steve here, and today I'm back out in my garage to show you my next Raspberry Pi video. Now, not too long ago, I made a video where I used a sawn-off device to control my garage door and be able to control it with my Amazon Echo or my Google Assistant. Now, that still works great to this day, but the one thing that I'm not able to do is know if this garage door is open or closed when I'm away from home. I can certainly open the garage door, but not knowing the status is the one thing that's been bothering me. So in this video, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi, a relay switch, and a couple door sensors on the garage door so that we can be able to find out what the status is of the garage door when I'm away from home. So on my garage door, I hook two magnetic reed switches onto the door. I have one down here when the garage is closed, and I have another one up here for when the garage is open. Now on the garage, there is a little magnet that I have attached to the door itself. And when the garage door opens, this magnet moves along with the door and will eventually make contact with this reed switch up here. Then I use a Raspberry Pi to be able to see which one of these magnetic reed switches is currently open. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect all this up to a Raspberry Pi, and I'm gonna give you my code I have that will allow you to use your phone to check the status of the garage door. So on my Raspberry Pi, I have a Flask web server running that's able to communicate with these magnetic read switches as well as this relay switch. And then I have on my phone a website to where I can open and close this garage door. So right now, uh, my phone shows it's green, so my garage door is closed. So if I go ahead and I enter the password onto my phone and hit enter, it'll open my garage door for me. But once the garage door is open, it changes the website to show that um, currently it doesn't know what the status of the garage door is. If I was just to hit the enter button again, it'll refresh and it'll check the status of the garage door. And if this garage door was completely open, this page would be red, showing me that the garage is open. So let's go ahead and take a little closer look at these read switches and then I'll show you my Raspberry Pi setup I have connected to my garage door opener. So this is the magnetic read switch. Right here is the magnet part of it. This is the reed switch. There are three terminals on this reed switch. There's a common terminal, a normally closed, and a normally open terminal. When this magnet is right here in front of the reed switch, it allows the current to flow from the common to the normally open. If this magnet was away, this connection would be broken. So if we look at the side angle here, you'll see that the magnet isn't actually drilled into the garage door. All I did was I removed a couple of the screws from the hinge, pushed a piece of metal here. This is a license plate. So I just stuck the license plate behind here, held it down, and now it's connected with the garage door. This piece where the reed switch is connected is just drilled into the wood on the side there. So the wire I use here is just actually a network cable. I have two wires here that go up and make contact with the rest of the wire. And it goes over here as well to this reed switch. So both of these wires are connected and then it follows the garage door all the way up just above my garage door opener. Let's go take a closer look at that. So just above my garage door opener is my Raspberry Pi. So this is a Raspberry Pi Zero. This is a relay switch. And over on this side is where all the wires come from those magnetic reed switches. One of these wires goes to the common and one of them goes to the normally open terminal on the reed switch. So there's two reed switches. So I have one connection here and the other connection up top. And then those wires are connected over into the Raspberry Pi through the header pins that are on here. Now I'm gonna show you how to set that up inside um, in a little bit. But let's take a look at this uh, relay switch. So on here, I have a pair of wires that actually go down into the garage door opener and actually turn the garage door opener on and off. So to be able to control the garage door opener, uh, we need to find the button that actually opens the garage door. So if I was to push this button, the garage door opener would open up. Now on here, there are two wires that come out of it. These two wires run to the garage door opener. If I was to touch those two wires together, that would trigger the garage door opener. And that's what that relay switch is going to do. If I was to follow the wires that come from the button over there, I would find out that they end up over in this little control center. Now, if I was looking here, I found out that um, terminal one and terminal two control my garage door opener. 
So if I was to take a short piece of wire and connect these two terminals together for one second, the garage door would open. So I'm gonna connect a piece of wire in a, this terminal, this terminal, and then I'm gonna connect it up to the relay switch. And I would connect that to the common terminal and then normally open terminal. Now that we have a general idea of what's going on and how, what I'm doing in this project, we're gonna go inside, I'm gonna show you how to wire this up, and then I'm gonna show you how to download my code that'll allow you to use your phone to know the status of your garage door opener. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi Zero W for this project, but any Raspberry Pi will work. First thing we're gonna go ahead and look at is the pinout on these Raspberry Pis. So if you look at the board with the pinout on our right-hand side when we're looking at it, you'll see at the very top left, there is one pin that has a square around it. That is pin one. The pin that is right next to it is pin two. The pin that is right under one is three. So one whole side will be odd numbers, the other one will be even numbers, and it just counts down all the way to 40. So we will need some jumper wire or breadboard wire for this project. I bought some of these on Amazon. They come in three different sets. We got some male to males, we got male to female, and we got female to female. So I'm gonna grab some male to male wires right away, and what we're gonna set up is the door sensors. So we're gonna need four wires. So on these uh, groups, you can just grab the number of wires that you need and pull off what you need. So I'm gonna grab four wires here. And looking at our schematic, we are gonna look for pins 14, 16, 18, and 20. So they're gonna be all in a line. So if we count down from uh, the top here, we got two, four, six, eight. We're gonna find uh, 14, which is a ground pin. We're gonna 16 and 18 are both communication pins and uh, pin 20 is also a ground pin. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these wires and I'm gonna stick them directly through the board. Now why this isn't a permanent solution, just jamming them in through the board. You will eventually have to solder these or you can grab some um, header pins and put those in the board as well. So you can either get solder header pins or they do make a solderless header pin. I think they are called a hammer header. Now I've never used those before, but they are available if you wanna pick one of those up. But for me, I'm just gonna jam these wires in and I'm gonna solder it from the back side, being very careful. But for the time being, I can just stick these to the board. And if I kinda of lean the pins at an angle, they're gonna make communication with the board. For the relay switch, there are four relays that are on this board. They do make ones that have less relays on them, but for me, four was cheapest at the time. So because there's four relays, there's gonna be four individual wires, one for each of these relays. Plus there's gonna be a fifth wire for five volts and a sixth wire for ground. So we're gonna need six wires. Now for these ones, you're gonna need a, a set of female wires. So I'm gonna grab some female to males. And I'm gonna hook the females onto this board and then we're gonna wire the males into the Raspberry Pi. So if we look at our screen here and we look at the, the layout here, our VCC is gonna to go to pin two because pin two is a five volt. Uh, pin seven, 11, 13, and 15. Um, they are all communication pins, so they are gonna be going to the relay switches. And then pin nine is a ground pin. So with that wired into the board, soldered as well, and with that all set up, we can now go ahead and we can download all of our code onto the Raspberry Pi. So on the Raspberry Pi, I've already gone ahead and I've set up a clean version of Raspbian Buster. Um, at the time, that's the current version. Uh, I do have a video that's showing you how to set up that software onto the micro SD card free to watch, but I'm not gonna get into it in this video. I'm gonna assume that you have a clean version set up. So go ahead and SSH into your Raspberry Pi. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna update the app git. So we're gonna type sudo apt-git uh, update. And this will take a little bit to update the software on the Raspberry Pi. Now with that done, we can go ahead and we can install Flask. Now Flask is a lightweight web server, and that's gonna be what can actually communicate with our phone. So this is going to be a sudo apt-git install python-flask. Once again, this will take a minute to install. Now with that installed, we can go ahead and we can install the git app. This will allow us to download all of my code off the GitHub. So once again, we'll go sudo apt-git install git. And it'll download all of that. Now with that installed, we can now download my code off GitHub. 
And for that, we're gonna type git clone and then the address of my GitHub page. And now with all that code quickly downloaded, if we do an ls command, we'll see that it created a directory called garage web. So we can go ahead and we can uh, change directory into that. And when we do an ls command, we see that there are four files in there. Now, three of these are Python codes and one of them is just images for um, the Flash server to use to display on our phone. So we're gonna go ahead and the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna do the relay test. Now, if you have all this wired up, we can go ahead and we can type python relay test.py. And when we hit enter, you can see that the relay is going to start triggering each one of these individual relays. And if it goes through the sequence of one after another and just keeps looping like that, you know you hooked the relay up correctly. So now with that correct, we're going to go ahead and we're going to close out the program by hitting Control C and it exits out. And now the next one we're going to do is we're going to do the log one. Um, log will actually log the opening and closing of your garage door all the time, but it also works as a test for our program. So once again, we're going to type Python log.py and we're going to run it. When we first start with the program, it's going to tell us that it doesn't know if the garage door is open or closed. It's going to say its door is opening, closing. And that's because neither of these magnetic read switches are currently closed. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a piece of wire and we are going to con connect two of the pins together. And when we do that, it'll say that the door is closed. When we release the pins, it'll say the door is opening and closing. If we touch the other two pins together, it'll say the door is open. When we release it, it'll say the door is opening and closing. And once again, when we do the bottom one, it'll say the door is closed. So this log file is just gonna keep track of the garage door so we can look at it later to see when the garage door is opening and closing when we're not at home. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit Control C and exit out of this program. And now we can go ahead and type ls again. And now we can type web.py. So we can start that up by typing Python web.py. So it's gonna start up our Flask web server and the default port is port 5000. So if we use our phone or our computer, we can communicate with the Raspberry Pi. So right now we're gonna go onto our computer, we're gonna to go to the address of the Raspberry Pi colon port 5000. And when we hit enter, it's initially gonna show us a yellow page because it doesn't know if this garage door is open or closed because none of these magnetic read switches are touching. So I'm gonna take a piece of wire and I'm gonna connect two of these pins to show uh, that there is a change. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna click the question mark in the center here. And it's gonna refresh the page and show that the garage door is currently closed, which is exactly what we want. If we take these pins off, click the picture of the garage, hit enter. It's gonna change the web page to show that it doesn't know if the garage door is open or closed. That means the garage door is opening or closing. And then finally, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do it on the other set magnetic read switch and we're going to click the button and it shows that it's now red showing that this is now garage is open now the one thing we can do is we can go ahead and we can click the box at the very top of the screen and we can enter in a password the password will open or close the garage door based on where it's at the default password that i have set up is one two three four five six seven eight click the picture of the house again and it triggers the relay switch. So once again, if we enter in our password, we're gonna watch the relay switch here, watch the lights, enter in the password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, click the house. It's gonna trigger the relay opening and closing the garage door, exactly what we want to do. Now when all that is said and done, and you know that everything's working, we're gonna wanna set this up so that this program will run every time the Raspberry Pi reboots. That way you don't have to log into the Raspberry Pi just to run these programs every time there is a power failure. So to do that, first we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna exit out of this program. And then we are gonna type sudo nano slash etc slash rc dot local. Now this is a file that is already pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi. If we go to the very last line where it says exit zero, we are gonna create a new line before that. 
And there we're going to type sudo python. And then we're going to type in the address of all of our program, which is going to be slash home slash pi slash garage web slash um, log dot pi. We're going to go space ampersand, the and symbol. We need that and symbol at the last part of this line so that it continues on to the next application. And then we're going to create a new line, same thing, sudo python slash home slash pi slash garage web slash web dot pi space ampersand or the and symbol. Now when that's all said and done, we can hit control X to exit out of the program. We are going to save it. And then the next thing to do would be to reboot the program. So you can just type sudo reboot, hit enter. Once that reboots, we'll give it about a minute to reboot the Raspberry Pi and start up both of our programs. Then we can go back to our phone or our computer, click the house and check the status of our garage door. Right now it changed that it doesn't know where the garage door is at. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna to touch these two terminals together to show that the garage is open. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna click the question mark in the center of the screen and it's gonna refresh the page. Now on your phone, you just go ahead and you keep touching the picture and it will constantly check in with the Raspberry Pi to check the status of the garage door. And at any time you can enter the password on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, click the picture again, and it will trigger the garage door for one second. Now, one thing I didn't show you is how to change the password on the Raspberry Pi. So let's do that real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna SSH back into the Raspberry Pi, change directory, go into garage web, do an ls, we are gonna to go to webpy, so sudo nano web.py. And then we are gonna go down until we find where it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the password. You can change the password to whatever you want. And then a little bit further down, you're gonna change the password in the second section to the same thing. That way the program will run. Once you've changed the password in that two spots, if you wanna change the port number for the Flask web server, that's gonna be on the very bottom line of this program. And all it says is, the last thing that is in this program says port equals 5,000. You can change it to port equals whatever port you want. Once that's done, we're gonna hit Control X and we're just gonna ask us to save the changes. You hit yes. And then you're gonna to have to reboot the Raspberry Pi again so that it knows that you've changed the password. Now, the way that we have everything set up right now, this will only work when your phone is on the same wireless network as the Raspberry Pi. So if you wanna be able to access this while you're out in the real world, you're gonna to have to open up a port on your router, port 5000 to be specific. That'll allow the internet to go through your router and talk to the Raspberry Pi. Without opening up that port, you will not be able to talk to the Raspberry Pi when you're out there. Now with so many different types of routers out there, uh, there's a lot of different ways to set that up. So I'm not gonna get into it in this video. I do have a separate video that I made a while back that I'll actually walk you through the steps on opening up the ports on a router. So that's gonna be it for this project. The last thing to do would be to hook this up into the garage. Now I recommend um, installing all this stuff onto something non-metal, that way you don't short any of this stuff up. I used a piece of plexiglass that I had laying around and I just zip tied it right to it. And then I have this set up right above my garage door. That way I can utilize the power supply that powers the garage door to power the Raspberry Pi. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below and I will try to answer them. And I will leave links to all the products I used to build this project down below as well. So be sure to check that out. And I will leave all the code, the four lines, down below as well so you can just copy and paste. So I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you liked it, be sure to give me a like and subscribe to my channel. I will have more videos coming out in the future, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys.